1956, Bert Troutman won the Football Writers Association Footballer of the Year, and he was the first non-British or Irish player and the first goalkeeper to win it. But also he has perhaps the most unique story in English football history and almost certainly in the history of the award. Can you tell me a little about how he came to live in England? Well, th this is the most astonishing story possibly in, in world sport, let alone English sport. He was a Nazi, to put it bluntly. He uh, grew up um, as a member of the Nazi youth um, in Bremen, where, where he was born. Um, joined the Air Force at the, um, just before the outbreak of the Second World War. Became a paratrooper, won the Iron Cross, certainly the only sportsman uh, in, in history apart from Germans to, <laughs> to hold the Iron Cross. And um, he was captured by the British and um, was brought to England to a prisoner war camp in Manchester. And uh, he started playing football with, for a local team. It was very casual. We, it wasn't concentration camp conditions. He was in an open prison. And he started playing uh, in goal for the local team. And uh, the great Frank Swift, who was the world's number one goalkeeper with Manchester City, was um, just about to retire. And City were hunting for a goalkeeper. And a scout said, well, there's a youngster down the road playing for the local team. He's a, a big blonde boy. He's, he, he looks the business. City sent their manager to have a look and uh, he was Im immensely impressed by him, by this young, big, blonde, blue-eyed boy, not realising that he was one of Hitler's Aryan boys. And uh, he talked to him after the match and found out his, and that he was German and uh, he found out about his prison war background. And he went back to his board and he said, what are we going to do? He said, there's an incredible goalkeeper just down the road to us playing in amateur football and I would like to sign him. And the board um, ummed and ahed and they said, but, but you know, he's, he's German. And they didn't realise that just how German he was, the, the fact that he was an, an Iron Cross holder. Um, anyway, they, they signed him for City. There were... the the Jewish population of Manchester were in uproar and there were uh, marches and protests through the streets saying, we can't sign this man, this is disgraceful. And uh, they then started watching Bert play at the back of the uh, Man City defence. They suddenly realised that this was a very special player and uh, they gradually accepted him. Um, he became um, a a loved member of the community, a loved member of the team, and arguably the greatest goalkeeper in the world. And uh, by the time of the 1957 FA Cup final, he was definitely the number one goalkeeper in Europe. And uh, it was then, only then, that his background started to come out. You know, the press started asking, this was in the 40s, the press started asking, who is this man? And um, when it emerged that he was a proper full-blown Nazi, it took a lot, a lot of people a long time to accept him. But he won them all over with one, his skill and ability, and number two, his charisma. He was such a likeable man. And um, Hollywood producers quickly became aware of it. And there's recently been a film made of, of his life story, which I recommend to anybody to find out just how astonishing his life was. You mentioned the anti-German sentiment around at the time and when Bert was signing for Manchester City there were a lot of protests. How did, not just him, but how did Manchester City win their fans around? Well, they, they, they were fortunate in as much as one of their shareholders or, was, was a, a rabbi and uh, he was the man who acted as peacemaker and uh, he called a, a meeting of all the protesters and put a very strong case for Bert. You know, let's judge B Bert Troutman, the footballer, not Bert Troutman, the German. It's not his fault where he was born. It's not his fault that there's a maniac called Hitler to, to you know, try and trying to rid the world of we, we wonderful Jewish people. Let's show warm-hearted 
uh, p people we are by giving him the welcome that he deserves. And that turned the opinion round, and they gradually accepted Bert. And uh, as I said, Bert won, him, won them over with his charisma and his skill. So Bert was the first goalkeeper, the first non-British or Irish player to win. What, what made him so special to have received this honour, especially when there was this, uh, this, this anti-German feeling around at the time? Well, Bert, Bert won the award purely on merit. I mean, let, let's remember he won it before the FA Cup final that made him infamous around the world for being the only goalkeeper to play on with a broken neck. And uh, he was presented with the award two days before the final. Played in the final against Birmingham City. 17 minutes to go, uh, an aggressive young Irishman called uh, Peter Murphy from Birmingham crashed in into Bert in a 50-50 dive for the ball. And uh, Bert was knocked unconscious. And when he came round, his neck was hurt, and he kept holding his neck. Don't forget, this is in the days before substitutes. Plays on for 17 minutes in a total daze. Manchester City go and, and um, collect their, their medals. But Burt was in a state of collapse, but still managed to get up the 39 steps to the Wembley Royal Box to, to collect his medal. He collapsed in the dressing room went for a, a check-up and they discovered that he'd, he'd broken his neck in two places. And the, prof the professor who inspected him said that any, any other man would have died. And it was that serious. And it was an another six months before he could play again. But then he played on for eight more years. Incredible man. So, yeah, I mean, you talk about this, this final making him world famous because of, because of what he did, but there was, obviously, this is what he's known for now, but his, his whole career, he was one of the top goalkeepers in the world at the time. Without question. Um, the, he, he followed in the footsteps of a, a man called Frank Swift, who sadly died in the Munich air crash in 1958. But, but he, he was Manchester City's goalkeeper over, over a period of more than 20 years. And he was considered the world's number one goalkeeper. And then along comes this unknown German, Bert Troutman, wins over the English fans and uh, wins over all the, the football writers of the time who recognise his genius. And they quite rightly rewarded him with the FWA trophy, which was the pinnacle of any footballer's career. And then in later life, he went on to be awarded an OBE as well. So he's, he's got that unique... Iron Cross and OBE double, which I don't think anybody else in the world has. No, he, he, he was accepted by our establishment, he, even though men, many of them were, were themselves war veterans, but, but they recognised genius when they saw it. And Bert Troutman was a genius of a goalkeeper.